Hi everyone, welcome to another video. This is actually the third part in a series of videos where on the lowest tide of the year we are rock pooling at lower shore which was just incredible it was so unbelievably low mid shore and now we're going to rock pool on upper shore i will link to those videos now if you want to go check them out before you watch this or watch this and watch them afterwards it doesn't matter too much um but today we are doing upper shore which is the part of the, the shore that is out of the tide for the longest they literally spend half of their time in air or in a rock pool at, at high tide and out of the sea and that means that they have to really adapt and survive and it's really really the harshest conditions on the entire shore are found up here i've said this in other episodes but i'll say it again here if you want to know the specifics about the biology the adaptation the evolution behind the really really harsh conditions that these species need to live in then go check out my episode called of when the tide retreats called surviving on the shore which goes into detail about just how incredible it is that we find life on the rocky shore and just how difficult it is to live there and uh, that goes into a lot more detail but today we're just going to be celebrating and loving the fact and showing you exactly what creatures you can find where so that when you guys go rock pooling you can uh, you can check out and go to the right place with that being said the thing i really want to show you and in this rock pool i have caught a glimpse already so hopefully i'm just about to prove my own point and i've picked the right rock pool is that um they're out of the tide for the longest but that also means they're away from the rest of the sea the reason they live at the top of the shore or these species that i'm these these species i'm about to show you live at the top of the shore is because they're out of the way of big hungry predators that can gobble them up as just a snack and they're risking that trade-off between a really harsh environment with an environment where they don't have to worry so much about being eaten and hopefully i'm just about to show you why within the even just the first couple of meters of the rocky shore you can find an incredible amount of life mm. So this lovely fish species is a dragonet and it is just wonderfully, wonderfully camouflaged and so, so tiny. It can get a lot bigger, but this is a juvenile species. And if you notice the difference between this one and the fish right at the start, and that was a painted goby, they're acting slightly differently. I could definitely get longer filming of this species than I could of the other one. And that's because this fish species is so well camouflaged that actually it's better for his survival if he just stays still and uses those incredibly amazing rotating eyes just to keep an eye on me whereas the other fish species has a bit less camouflage and he is basically surviving by being really agile now i know i said earlier that they are up here because there's less predation and that is true but you still have to watch out for birds and that's what these fish species are really really um, worried about when the tide is out but they're so small and so tiny that it's much better for them to be in this tiny rock pool than in the ocean with all the other big fish 
But it's not just fish that you find in the top of the rock pools, you find a load of other small, minute, juvenile species. Like, look at this tiny, teeny weeny hermit crab next to all the grains of sand. You also find things like amphipods, which love to live under rocks, and teeny weeny juvenile crabs that just like to hang out and stay out the way because they are so small. But their camouflage, especially at the juvenile stage, is really, really well done. Limpets love the top of the shore. They can survive because if they need to, they can clamp down on a rock and survive out of water. But this one is in a rock pool, so um, his shell was kind of open, but I didn't quite get um, long enough to see his, uh, his little snail self. You can also find some real gems at the top of the shore and this is a little flatworm that was still living in a rock pool and you know don't underestimate what you can find even within the first couple of meters because this is a really special find and look at his cute little eyes and that was you know up the top of the rock pool with everything else. organism with a shell that is able to clamp onto the surface you're able to survive a lot better at the top of the rocky shore and this is a chitin that's actually moving and you can see that although they do have this really tight grip on the rock they're actually quite flexible and I was kind of amazed watching this I haven't seen one move around the bottom of a rock before but look at him go it's a uh, yeah it's a uh, like the gymnast of you know the hard shelled things of the rocky shore, I was very impressed. As I was saying earlier, being small, camouflage is key to survival and one of the species that does this best is the brown shrimp and it really just blends in with the rocky shore. And if you zoom in, he's actually got eyes on the top of his head like that dragonette. And it's that strategy again of being really camouflaged but using eyes at the top of your head to always keep an eye on things. And um, there are also, because there's a lot of juvenile uh, crabs up here, it just happens that some of them um, die. H hermit crabs are feeding here and watching them squabble was absolutely hilarious. They're not massive predators, hermit crabs. They are things that like to go around and eat things that have already died. So maybe this crab just passed away in another way and uh, the hermit crabs were scavenging for them. They're scavengers, so they were making the most of it. But as much as they're scavengers, they're also squabblers and um, Watching these three hermit crabs argue over trying to get food was potentially the highlight of my day. <laughs> So if you watched the lower shore video, look, that is literally the bit of concrete that we were at the other end of that ended and we were rock pooling. That is incredible. Hi everyone, Elizabeth here from a distant beach and future again. If you haven't seen this video, we'll have to pop onto the end of that. Basically the tide was coming in so unbelievably fast and I forgot to film, um, or didn't have time to film the, you know, outro bit before the tide came in. So I'm doing it now. And I also wanted to say, there was something that I spoke about, but the audio was ruined, which seems to be a theme this year. And that was the fact that I loved showing particularly the upper shore one, because all that I found there was literally within the first couple of meters of the shore, the first couple of meters. It was incredible. You've got kids and you're worried that getting to the bottom of the shore is gonna be really difficult or 
maybe you just don't want to risk going right out maybe you just want to go rock crawling with the least amount of effort but you're worried that all this work to go to this place is not gonna be worth it well i tell you it is all of that life was found in the first few meters of that rock pool and that is what's great about rock pooling is that every single meter makes such a difference and the biggest difference in that one meter change is probably the meter from the bit of beach that very rarely just gets covered by the tide at the top and the bit that hits the top of the rocky shore because in that one meter you go from terrestrial pretty much creatures that can only live in air to marine creatures and you'll find the fish and crabs and hermit crabs and seaweeds and snails and everything right instantly right at the top of the shore as well so i just loved the fact that I, I knew that I would be able to find a rock pool with so much life in and I managed to do it and capture it for you. And take it into consideration, so I usually rock pool, it takes me maybe four, five-ish hours, four hours maybe, to film a rock pooling vlog. So that's all the creatures. I only had about 20 minutes, 30 minutes at the top of the shore before the tide came in. And we found all that in 20, 30 minutes. And so it just goes to show that there's so much life and you can find it so quickly and it's just incredible. So please go out and explore for yourself. Make sure to tag me on my social medias at Marine Mumbles, what you find. I want to hear about what you're finding around the country, around the world. It's absolutely fantastic. Speaking of that, I have a series about rock pooling around the world, which I'll link here. So if you're rock pooling anywhere else from the UK and you're watching this right now, please, if you've got footage you want to share and you want me to talk through it go watch that video if you want to get included in the next one drop me an email with some footage for me to include or just ask me a couple of questions and i'd love to include that i really hope you've enjoyed watching this kind of three-part mini series on what you can find at each level of the zone it will change depending on where you are but still i hope the idea behind it worked and i had a blast this was an incredible rock pulling trip and so so worth being able to put into four different videos three different videos so so worth being able to put in three different videos it was so so good so i will catch you next week for another video if you have any ideas for more videos comment below i'm here to share the w amazing world of marine life and i want to share what you want to see so uh, let me know what you want to see have a great week everyone bye <laughs>